nation's favourite antiques experts. Let's get fancy. Behind the wheel of a classic car. I'm always in turbo. And a go to scar Britain for antiques. Hot stuff. The aim to make the biggest profit at auction. <gasps> but it's no mean feat. There'll be worthy winners. Cha-ching. Oh, my goodness. And valiant losers. Mm, bonkers. Will it be the high road to glory? You are my ray of sunshine. Oh, stop it. Or the slow road to disaster. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> This is Antiques Road Trip. Yeah. Hey, welcome to North Somerset. It is the Antiques Road Trip. You betcha, Margie. We've worked really hard, haven't we? We've worked really We're hard. smart, aren't we? Exceedingly. It's the final leg with Antiques dealers, the super chic Margie Cooper and <laughs> cool cat Ochuko Ojuri. <laughs> I wasn't that worried when I was going to be with you. I thought, oh, I'll probably beat him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't hold back, Margie. Our pair are zooming about in this bit of class, a 1963 Jag made before seatbelts were mandatory. I need to spend some money now. Yeah. I want to spend big. Yeah, you need to. So you can lose big. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Margie. Last time, there was some daredevil calf stunt. Oh, my goodness! <laughs> Whoa! Margie channelled Mrs Beaton. A very experienced 17-year-old <laughs> cook. <laughs> and despite Chuko's nerves... Ah, a bit squeaky bum time. He strikes auction gold. At £420. Sold, thank you very blanched. Much. Great auction, that, Margie, wasn't it? Wonderful. <laughs> oh, silence. You like rubbing it in there. Hey, road trip bezies. Margie started this trip with 200 smackers, and despite having a weighty purse of 539 pounds and 16 pence, she is trailing behind her compadre. Chuko started with the same, and now look at him go. He has 1,004 pounds and 82p. Yeehaw! I'm a broken woman. You're now. broken now, <laughs> aren't you? You've given up? No. It's all no, I have people. not given no up. No way. You tell him, Margie. The Gallivant began in Liverpool, heading south along the Welsh border, taking in the West Country, which continues today, with a big auction finale in Didcot in Oxfordshire. You're a cool dude. Thanks, okay. Margie. Thank you. You're a cool dude. And you're dude. an elegant lady. Oh. Mutual appreciation society, I say. Our road trippers are in Wiltshire, shopping all the way to Royal Wooten Bassett. First shop, Western Superman. With Chuko dropped off elsewhere, Margie begins her shopping mission in this fine establishment. Inside, there is a rich supply of delights on offer. With over 500 smackers, Margie has plenty of cash to pick up some faves. It's all about searching in shops like this and looking above. You don't look above, do you? It's all about scanning every nook and cranny, Margie. See anything up there? No? Right, I continue my search. <laughs> She's full of beans. Well, what have we got in here? <laughs> oh, that's cute. Oh, look at that. A little teeny little propelling pencil. And a little kiddies, kiddies bracelet. I like these, I and mean, I've bought and sold so many propelling pencils. And they're always good sellers, and they're so different. This has got a little citrine in the back. Feels gold, and propels down and up. But little miniature things sell well. And this has been on somebody's chatelaine, or just to make a quick note, buy the bread. Practical. The world's first mechanical pencil was invented right here in Britain in 1822. And that is just a little child's uh, little bracelet with a little heart locket. I wonder if those would go as a pair. Both items are unpriced. Let's leave Margie to rummage. Elsewhere, in the town of Western Supermare, Chuko is just a short walk away. Violet Antiques is the first lovely shop on his list. Wow. Hi, Angie. What a beautiful shop. Thank you, Chuko. Angie's the lady in charge, and that's her little doggo, Pidge. <laughs> Now, Chuko is Mr Moneybags with a capital M. He's got over a grand to play with. Lovely. 
Wow, what a great look, that. Oh, I love stuff like this. I mean, it looks Victorian, doesn't it, straight away? What a handsome horse. And I like quirky, it's a bit eerie. Well, it has ears. Let's have a look. Vintage hand-carved wooden carousel. £295. I think it's a great thing, worth all of the money, but maybe not quite enough age in it for me. So I have to leave you. Sorry, sir. Bye-bye. Oh. Oh, I really like this. Look at that. How cute is that? Oh, I love it. And it comes with two others. I really like stuff like this. Plate doll head or head and shoulder doll. And this is porcelain, this head. Up until the mid 19th century, most dolls looked like grown ups. When childlike dolls hit the market, they took the world by storm. And they're really collectible. £19, and it comes with two others. These three are now coming home with me. I'm not even going to argue. Look at that. Angie and the teeny tiny dog Pidge await. Angie, I found these lovely shoulder head dolls. Oh, yes, they are nice, aren't Victorian? they? Victorian? Yes. <laughs> it says £19. Yes. Can I buy them? Absolutely. I'm feeling really generous today. You are. That is £20. <laughs> thank you. Keep change. Oh, thank, thank you very you much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Choco. Have Chico. a coffee. For a pound? <laughs> Maybe in 1982, Choco. He's not hanging around today, though. He now has £984 and pennies. Back to Marge. Hi. Eyes in the back of your head in shops like these. Takes hours to look around. Oh, that's a familiar little chap. That's the Lincoln Imp. You'll find him on, the, on a wall inside Lincoln Cathedral. The legend goes that Satan sent this creature to Lincoln Cathedral only to be turned into stone by an angel. We've got an aperture there. And he's obviously been... There's a hole here. Was he a door knocker? Do you think he's an ice chap or is he not an ice chap? Who knows? He's unpriced too. Dealer Robert is ready and waiting. Let's start with the Edwardian miniature nine carat gold propelling pencil and the nine carat gold child's bracelet. The price set, I would say 30, and uh, pencil, shall we say 30 as well? 60. Now I'm thinking this little chap who's. This little fella. Little fella. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of money would you take if I, have, if I had the most? 100 for all. I was thinking, would 80 buy the two, the two lots? 95? <laughs> I think that's a good deal. 90. OK, we do 90. Done. Thank you, Robert. The combo lot of nine carat gold propelling pencil and child's bracelet for £45 and the Lincoln Imp also for £45. Nice work, Margie. She now has a smidge under £450. And while she heads on, let's find Chuko. He's in the outskirts of Bath. This city, founded by the Romans, is instantly recognisable by the honey-coloured Georgian architecture. Not many know this precious stone comes from a nearby quarry. Chuko's visiting the village of Coombe Down. It was right here that the youngest postmaster in Britain would become responsible for the city of Bath's sensational 18th century development. Miranda Litchfield from the Museum of Bathstone can tell all to Chuko. We've just driven through Bath. Looks absolutely beautiful. What's the importance of Bath Stone? Bath Stone is an Neolithic limestone and it's used all across the city. It's about 163 million years old. The geological period, the Bathonian era, it's named, it's after, named after Bath Stone. Coombe Down, almost the entire village is, is sat on mines. The stone taken from there built the Georgian aspects of the city. So this is the time of Ralph Allen. He created these underground quarries and was able to extract the stone in very large quantities. Ralph Allen started out as a post office clerk in 1710. He rose to postmaster and went about streamlining the postal system. His enterprises earned him a fortune with which he bought the Coombe Down Mines. 
Throughout the 18th century, Allen employed a battalion of men to extract the honey-coloured stone that built the city. Just wandering around and you see the sheer quantity of stone. That's been carved out by hand. It's a free stone, so you can cut it in any direction. We would love for you to actually try sawing it. I'm not very good at DIY. Are you sure about this, Miranda? Stand back. This <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. OK, so I'm just... Whoa! Oh, that seems... Uh, it's easy to kind of get through. Mm -hmm. What makes it so... So this, this block is not actually long out of an underground quarry. This is when it's great to carve, great to cut through. So yeah. it will become um, a lot harder over time. So all of these Georgian buildings were basically built by hand. Absolutely. Back in the day, everything would have been carved yeah. by hand. Despite this rudimentary method, Ralph Allen did use cutting-edge technology. He built a tramway to ferry the stone that would build one of the finest Palladian cities. Wow, graffiti. It would have been done by some of Ralph Allen's quarrymen in the Kingdown Stone Mines. This stone is built, not basically, it's actually built by cities. So that's a large quantity of stone. What impact has that had? It left the village very unstable. And over time, people coming in uh, and taking the pillars which are holding up these mines, it gradually took away the integrity of the mines. Uh, people had holes in their gardens, which were starting to open up. Things were starting to sink in people's Scary. gardens. In the 1990s, there was a very big storm, um, and there's a very big tree on the local field, uh, and that blew over. It took the roots and all the soil underneath uh, and revealed a very, very large chasm, which made the, the problem very apparent. Around 82% of the stone under Coombe Down had been excavated, and some parts of the roof were only two metres thick. Homes around the village were at risk of falling into the empty mines. Ooh. How did they tackle it? They filmed it full of famed concrete. The mines are still, they're still there, they're still underneath us. They have recruited uh, about 500 miners from South Wales who had the expertise for working in underground environments, yeah. very hazardous. They were actually the guys that were working in these very confined spaces and actually putting in the roadways to make it safe for them to then fill it in and stabilise it. Today, there are only a handful of Bath stone mines left. Truco's donning his hard hat to meet mine supervisor Adrian Boniface to explore what's left of this subterranean world. Where we're standing now is 1820s. If you look on the ceiling there, you'll see an initial and the date's 1822. Absolutely incredible. They would pick out a slot and then proceed to cut down with a handsaw right the way down to the bottom. Following that, they would have pulled the block out with a hand-operated crane, loaded it onto trolleys to take up to the surface. Right here in the 21st century, the process is a world away from the early mining techniques. What we start off with is a series of horizontal cuts, and then we move on to a series of vertical cuts. Years ago, this would have been done by hand. <laughs> that looks a lot easier than the handsaw. And taken a lot longer, too. Bath stone continued to be mined throughout the 19th and 20th centuries. It was even used on Windsor Castle. Today, Bath Stone is shipped all over the world, but it's also used to repair the original stone buildings in the city of Bath itself. Meanwhile, let's find Margie. I didn't think he was going to be a dangerous opponent, but I found out that he is. <laughs> and he's a handy stonemason, too. Margie is now in beautiful Bath. Do you know, the first ever stamp was mailed from here in 1840. Now Margie always delivers antiques know-how. She's going in here. It's not With just under £450, what will she find? So. so we're here in biscuit heaven. <laughs> I've never seen so many biscuit tins in all my life. And it's a great collector's market. Not that you see that many unusual ones. Found this one. Look, violin case by McFarlane Lang. We all know the names of these biscuits. And I open it up. £325. So I'm not buying it. Great novelty way of finding your bickies fresh. Just a tad too rich for our Margie. I noticed this when I was coming into the shop. Obviously, a shoe repair a sign. Oh, somebody's on the ball. I suppose it falls under... Folk art is very simplistic, and I do like signs. I mean, they are the internet of yesterday, aren't they? Whereby all you had was a sign outside your shop. Come in and let me repair your shoes. So it's made out of, it's made out of mahogany. It is mahogany. Quite crude, but quite charming. Interesting. Certainly big enough. It doesn't have a price.
So this is called a Mabira, which is to do with the Shona tribe. They're from Zimbabwe. And I think it's a kind of finger piano. Bit of uh, tribal art. The thumb piano of Africa, the Ambira, first appeared over a thousand years ago and was used at weddings and funerals. But it was also used to call upon the spirits for advice. Maybe the prophet gods will be kind to you, Margie. Would somebody want that? And give me a small prophet, because I need it. Catch it with my friend. It's priced at £39. Right, this is rather a nice little thing. It's a belt buckle, look. Right, and this is called micro mosaic, which is like little tiny squares of glass that are put together very cleverly to form all sorts of designs. Micro mosaic uh, goes back centuries, and each one of these little square tiles is called tesserae, which is which means a tile, a square tile. The Edwardian belt buckle is unpriced. There's the man in charge, Michael. Let's ask the very best price on the very big Edwardian shoe repair sign and the early 20th century thumb piano, priced at 39. So if I said... 100. <laughs> A very good one. Uh, say 130 for the Lot. three things. Yeah. I'm in biscuit heaven. <laughs> so I'll agree to that and thank you. Thank you very much. And I'll put it down there. There we go. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. That breaks down to 75 for the Edwardian shoe sign, 30 for the Ambira, and 25 for the Edwardian belt buckle. Leaving Margie with a titch under £320. Thank you for the vitamins. <laughs> well, I wish I hadn't bothered with those. Why? Well, it perked you up. <laughs> She's regretting that. <laughs> Nighty night. Rise and shine, we're in Wiltshire. <laughs> <laughs> One more bite there, <laughs> oh, And we've got so much money, I want to spend it. Go for it, Chuko. A spectacular buy from me will win it, or a spectacular loss from my friend here. You know where you stand with Margie? Oh, I will miss you. I'm not good at picking up the phone. I'm good at texts. Oh, right. Well, we'll do that then. Yeah, I'm pretty good at texts. Uh, how are you? I am good. <laughs> Sounds like a barrel of laughs. Yesterday, Margie was a whirlwind shopper, scooping up the combo lot of the Edwardian miniature propelling pencil and child's bracelet and the Edwardian shoe repair sign, the thumb piano, the Edwardian belt buckle and the cast metal Lincoln imp. Do you think he's a nice chap or is he not a nice? Leaving her with just shy of £320. While Chuko was Mr Chill, despite his spectacular riches, he picked up only one purchase at £20, the Victorian doll's head. Look at that, how cute is that? leaving our man Choco with over £980. God blimey. Would you call a hot dog a sandwich? Never. Never? No, I wouldn't. Hamburger? No, a hamburger's a burger. What is this, the sandwich police? <laughs> Today, their final gallivant takes place in Didcot. With Margie dispatched elsewhere, Choco's in Melksham. And he's heading in here. Great name. <laughs> Let's wing this and get some auction quackers. With a colossal amount of money, 984 pounds and pennies, let the rummage begin. Hats, hats. It's no secret, it's my absolute passion. Look at these hat moulds. This is like a milliner's dream, isn't it? Great styles, aren't they? This one would be mine and I'd have it in an angle. I'd be like, here. Oh, he does love a tit for. You know, these things are quite easy to date, really, because look at the shapes. The shapes set you right in that time, right in that fashion. 30s, 40s, that deco kind of time. Look how elegant this one is. These stands would have been later, just to display them. Really good. 
I love these. They've got £65 on each. That has to be something that comes with me. I want to make a profit, but if I don't, I don't care. Look at these. Phenomenal. The total price of the hat moulds and stands comes out at £195. What else? Hello? But he's an unusual fellow, isn't he? What sculpture? It says on here, Peter Pan. Does that look like Peter Pan? It's a work of art. Such a tactile thing, and you've got thumbprints in there, and it's got so much personality. It's not signed, which is a shame, but I think it's really handsome. And what I love is that it's an absolute one-off. And I suspect mid-century, you know, 1950s, something like that, but I really like it. Striking, £185. I'm going to add that to my list. <laughs> Very smouldering. Another pricey one. We're gathering pace. I'm a sucker for these medical posters. Let's have a look. What this... Look at that. Oh, I loved straight away. The blue and, you know, forget the teeth and the gory nature of this. All I can see is the green, the blue and the red and this lovely kind of almost like a baby blue. That sings to me straight away. Gesunde Zain, Gesunde Korpa, healthy teeth, healthy body. Spot on. I think this is wonderful. What a great interior designer's piece. And again, that golden era for me, mid-century. Gorgeous. I'd like to try and add this to my little hall. Little? The set of 1930s wooden hat moulds and stands, the 1950s terracotta head, and the German anatomical chart all come to, wait for it, <laughs> 475 smackers. Now, there's Anne. Let's ask. Great shop here. Thank you. It belongs to my brother-in-law. Oh. I'd like to be at... 200 for the free. Oh, I think that's probably too low for my brother-in-law. Um, I can ask. Please. OK, I'd I'll have that. to message him, though. No he's, problem. He's overseas. Thank you very much. But I get this still. I love all of the things. They're beautiful. The terracotta head. Wow. It's a big discount. Fingers crossed. He said the best he can do would be 220. 220. Yeah. And that's an absolutely phenomenal price. That's 100. 220. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Anne. That bulk buy breaks down to 80 for the set of 1930s hat moulds and stands, 80 for the 1950s terracotta head, and 60 for the German anatomical chart. With everything safely now in the boot, Chuko's finally spending his watch. He now has just a smidge under £765. Now, where's our Margie? Well, she's skipped to Chippenham, in the heart of Wiltshire, and to here, the Conservation Advisory Service. The preservation of antiques is close to every dealer's heart, and Margie's meeting with Alison Foster a senior conservator, to learn about the difference between conservation and restoration. Conservation is more about retaining or preserving the original material. A good example of the difference between conservation and restoration um, might be a hip flask that belonged to a soldier and it had a, a shrapnel hole right the way through it. It saved the soldier from that shrapnel damage. Mm. From a conservation perspective, we retain that hole, retaining the story, the significance of that hip flask and that link between the war and the soldier. Thus preserving the integrity of the item and its original use. This was championed by arts and crafts revolutionary and celebrated designer William Morris. He ignited the conservation movement in the 19th century. Alarmed by the Victorian techniques of destructive restoration, he campaigned for the protection of historic buildings. This ideal was adopted and is now practised on everything from ceramics to textiles. This is a stereo microscope um, and we use these on a daily basis mm -hmm. um, to look at things that aren't visible very easily with the naked eye. Well, what am I looking for? 
we uh, recently visited a museum and took some debris from a, a storage case. Some of this natural history was not in the best condition. And I, oh. I wonder if you can see <gasps> the culprit. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. What is that? That is the larvae of a carpet beetle. Alison, are you telling me that... Is there a chance that he could be in my house? There is a chance, a, a big chance, that he might be in your house. Crumbs. This is another element of, of conservation. It's also about preventing damage from happening in the first place, knowing what pests we have and what they eat and um, how they might impact on the collections. Preservation of an object can sometimes be more important than making it look as good as new. This is an item that belongs to uh, Arundel's in Salisbury. The home of former Conservative Prime Minister Ted Heath. And this bowl belonged to him. It was broken into many pieces when it was in his possession. Oh, yeah. It came to us looking very much like this. The adhesive had yellowed very badly. The client wanted us to uh, take the ceramic down and re-adhere it. Was the client hoping for it to be, sort of, to, for the cracks to be visible or not? She would like us to, in a sense, give an honest repair. So from a distance, you probably won't be able to oh, see the repairs. Close up. But close up, you will be able to see the, right. the repairs. But why would they request that? The, the break is part of the story. It's part of its life. I wonder if um, Sir Edward did that or somebody else did it. Shall we I blame don't him? Know. Let's blame him. <laughs> Today's dedicated conservator continue to uphold William Morris's principles of preserving the past for generations to come. Now, where's Chuko? Absolutely gutted this is all coming to an end. I'm really going to miss Margie. She's been phenomenal. What a partner in crime. Easy to be nice when you're winning. <laughs> Royal Wooten Bassett is where Chuko's pointing his motor. He's off to rummage in Old Bank Antiques. There should be plenty for Chuko to get his mitts into. He's got a huge wadge of just under £765. This really stands out to me. Look at the work in that. I mean, something like this to me is just, it's just a nice object. It's an Ethiopian Coptic cross. When I see something like this, I feel quite excited and I just love this depiction of what I think is an angel on there. And something that's really unusual and it's got a different kind of feel and history to it. Could be 19th century, could be very early 20th century. Very difficult to say, but I like it. It's got £60 on it. I love a bargain, I love a haggle. Maybe I can put that in a job lot. You better get a move on, Chuko. Here comes Margie. She has nearly £320. These are fascinating, aren't they? This is uh, what an optician would have used probably early part of the 20th century. I mean, can you imagine hundreds of years ago when your eyes start to fail and t even if you've got good eyesight, it starts to go at about 45. <laughs> your arms aren't long enough. <laughs> This is £120, which doesn't seem a lot of money, does it, for the history of opticians? Doesn't it look great? I really like that. That wouldn't really match with anything that I bought already. So I'm going to sit and look at it, enjoy it, but not buy it. Now, Chuckos found dealer Steve. Something's just come in. OK. Ooh. Let me That's see if I can get it for you. OK. I feel like I should close my eyes. Feast your eyes on this. Elizabeth, our queen. That's shiny, isn't it? Let me put my glasses on. OK, they're exquisite, aren't they? These are all hallmark silver and they're all depicting different events that the Queen's been at. Absolutely, yeah. How much would that be? Uh, that would come out at 379.50. I'm very tempted. Um, I've seen a lovely Ethiopian Coptic cross oh, yeah. over there. Mm -hmm. and that's got £60 on it. Could we be at this and that 400 I would prefer 420 Split the difference, 410 I could do 410 Brilliant. Yeah. £410. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's a major dent in Chuko's overflowing pockets. And that leaves over £350 unspent. You found a friend, haven't you? Can I you? This is Kang, the Tibet boy. Oh, no, he's gone. <laughs> he's not really your friend, is he? What if it, what's it say there? Romance of the Road. Oh, that's me and you, <laughs> isn't it? I think I'll buy that for you. I think so. Yes, how much is it? £155. Take care. <laughs> Good luck with your shopping. <laughs> Over the charmer, Chuko. Wow, shiny, shiny, shiny. I don't want to look at first. The trunk is interesting. 
lovely carving. But inside, there's a load of Hallmark silver and it says bargain bin. I like the fact there could be a bargain in there and I've got a lot of money. 60p a gram, I'm guessing that's a scrap value. Look at that lovely 30s, like real deco shape. I mean, some of this seems a shame to scrap, but there's a lot in here, all hallmarked. There is, it's literally a treasure chest. There's a lot of money in there. In my head, I want it to be 500 pounds. It's probably more like 5,000. We'll leave you to rummage, Chuko. Ooh, Margie, what have you spotted over there? I've just seen this rather nice little filigree silver bracelet. Filigree is so delicate, so pretty. It's wire work formed into tracery. I bought that belt buckle, if you remember. I'm not too happy about it because it's damaged. So this just might fatten up the lot. <laughs> Let's find Steve to talk dosh. Steve, I've seen this pretty little filigree bracelet. You're doing it by weight, so I'm fingers crossed. Well, I can probably do that for a pound a gram. 33? That'd be fine. OK, Thank wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you. Very... Steve, thanks a lot. Thank you, Margie. Yes, bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. That's Margie all done and dusted. What a trico. He's still at that chest. I want to pick out stuff that I like as well, stuff that's got intrinsic value, not just scraps. Oh, this could be some time. Yeah, nice. Look at those. Always go for a pair. I think that will do it. Steve. <laughs> oh, this is absolutely great. I couldn't get all that silver out of my head. What do you think? Can you weigh them up for me? Absolutely. Well, the whole lot is £389.82. Right, so this is the thing. <laughs> this is all I've got. I've got £354.82. Right. And these wonderful Victorian porcelain dolls. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't, don't look that. I love them. I'm not just saying that. I could do five pounds each for them. That's all I've got. If you could do, let's just, can we not do a straight exchange? We're nearly at five pounds each, aren't we? OK, all yes. right, all right. I've managed to spend every single penny. Like your style, Chuko. Trading up is what the game's all about. Right, you got that. What a great shot. Yeah, fantastic. Good quality in there. Yeah, lovely, yeah. If you win, I will be delighted. And if I win, I'll be super delighted. If you win, I'll be gutted. <laughs> Handbags at dawn, eh? Shut eye for you two. <laughs> it's the end of the line for our two trippers as they pull into this splendid railway town. So here we go, one last chance to shine. The final countdown, the final sale. <laughs> yes. Can't wait, I'm excited. I'm excited, come on, let's go. Having rummaged their way across Somerset and Wiltshire, journeys end for our experts will be Didcot in Oxfordshire. Their final battle will take place at Churchill Auctions with eager bidders online, on the phones and in the sale room. Taking care of business today, gavel master Anthony Tinson. Sell at 15. Margie spent £253 on five auction lots. Let's find out what her old mucker makes of them. Wow, what's this? I never thought Margie was musical. But, oh, it's not the most tuneful thumb piano. Yeah, I like it, though, because I love anything musical. But Chuko went all in, blowing his entire £1,004 on his six lots. But do any of them pass the Margie seal of oh. approval? Oh, he likes these. He's bought one of these before. Uh, an anatomical chart. A, it's in good condition. B, they, they are collectible. And C, he paid £60. Pounds. Rather depressingly, I think he's going to do OK on this. A few rotten ones there. <laughs> Ouch! Right, take your seats for the last time on this trip. I've gone all in. <sighs> Spent the lot. Scared money doesn't make money. But we'll see, won't we? <laughs> we will, right now, cos his commemorative silver ingots are up first. And there we go, we're at 300 on commission oh, then. There you go. You're straight. in. 320, commission bidders out. 350 now at 350. Okay, do we want 380? Okay. At 350 it is at 350. Do we want 380 now? Come on. Now. At 350 it is on the net at 350. Bit do more we want than 60 that. Come now? On. 360 in the room now. Do you want 370? Oh. It's really there. 360 in the room. Do we want 370 Somebody's on the net? Somebody's tempted. Fair warning. We'll sell to the room at 360 then. 
It's all bit right. of a gamble, that's OK. Bit of a gamble. Yeah, it's OK. A lovely piece of memorabilia for a lucky collector. R.I.P. Queen Elizabeth. It went to the room. I like that. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Umbira time now, or Zimbabwean thumb piano, if you're Margie. And I've got 20 on commission, 22, 25. Did you pay? Are out. We're at 30. 28 on the net. Do we want 30 now? Um, go on. £28 oh, no, on the net, go on. 28 on the net. At 30, do we want five? Don't tell me, it's only going to fetch 30 pounds. Five, no. 30, do Just we want do a five bit now? 30 pounds then? Seems like that's where we finished at oh. 30. And we'll sell to the net bidder at 30 pounds. Oh, that's <laughs> annoying, isn't it? It was the way Chucko was playing it. I played the market price, <laughs> which is what you're not supposed to do. <laughs> Something else from Africa now Chucko's Coptic Cross. We're up to 30 on the net, looking for five now. Come on. £30 bid at 30, oh, 35 yeah, bid for 40. Goodness. Fresh legs at 40, do we want five? That's a really good thing. Yeah. And 40 bid at 40, do we want five now? I really like it. Come on. £40 bid at that. 40, this is your fair warning. Yeah, you've got Lamp nobody the against them. £40 no. pounds then, and we'll sell to the net bidder at 40 and I selling. I really like that. But you've got to, you know, you've happy with that. made a bit. Yeah, first profit of the day. Nice thing, that. I would have bought that. Why didn't you buy it? You were in there. I didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> Something closer to home now. Margie's imp pulse purchase. <laughs> Straight in at £30 on the net at 30. Do we want five? £30, do we oh, want five? Oh, no. Uh, Got nobody in the room four. wants it. Someone thought it was a door knocker. I can't <laughs> see it myself, but it could Maybe. be anything. Could be a vehicle. Like, it stops. deserves a lot more than oh, that. Oh, little Yeah, that's not fair. Interesting to find out. At £35 on my left at 35 <gasps> do we want 40 on. now? £35 it's gone off pounds my little friend. Standing bid at 35 <laughs> on my left at 35 and selling. Oh, that's unfair. That's a bit unfair, that. He looks furious about it. It's hard taking a loss. I mean, sure it's supposed to make a profit. Isn't that the aim of this? <laughs> well, kind of. Goodness. Now, who doesn't want a wooden hat on a stick? truco has got three of them. 22 straight in on the net, 25, 28, come on. 30 and 5. Come on, come on. 35 bid at 35, 40 now at 40, do we want 5? 45, 50 bid at 50, do we want 5 now? 55. Oh, come on, 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 come 90. 90 pounds we've got. Do you want 95? Come on. 95. Nope. We've got 100 on the net. Oh, brilliant. That's, that's, great. that's always a psychological stopping point. Yes. 100, 110. Oh, you've got it. 120. <laughs> 110 bid at 110. Selling at 110. Well done. That's, that's all right. That, yeah. Nice hat trick there, Chucko. <laughs> Hats are lucky for you. They are, aren't they? Yeah. Never taking them off. Margie's belt buckle and bracelet combo now. Let's see if this turns heads. Ninety pounds on the net. Oh, I'm quite happy with that. Ninety on the net. Do we want five? It's the micro mosaic. Ninety pound, ninety-five, one hundred. Oh, one hundred. One ten, one ten, one twenty. At one hundred and twenty, then on the net at one twenty. Oh, good. Oh, that's cheered me up. I'm not surprised. A sterling effort there. All of a sudden, the sun's come out, isn't it? Next. The antique that'll never get old, Peter Pan. I think we're up to forty pounds and fifty on the auto bids, and five and sixty. Oh, at 60 come on. on the bids at six and seventy. We're up to at seventy. Do we want five it's now? It's great. It's worth more than a lot more than that. At seventy pounds, five 80. and eighty. Do we want five? You've got your money back. Still holding okay. at eighty pounds. I'd love to see it at ninety. Slow though. Oh, we'll sell for eighty pounds. <sighs> <sighs> Exhale. Exhale. That's called washing your face. Something he could do with. Can't win them all. Can't win them all. Another of Margie's combos now. Pencil and bracelet this time. Commission's in at £50, looking for five now. 55. You're ready in a profit, you're in 55. 55 in the room, do we want 60? Go on, 60. Net's quiet now at 55 then. Oh, come on to 60. £55 and selling then. Don't be too disappointed. I wanted 60. I want, I want, never get. Be happy with your £10 profit. C'est la vie, c'est la vie. <laughs> now, what would be the ideal sale price for Chucko's dental chart? Tooth hurty? 
Look after your teeth. Look after your teeth. Good teeth, good health. Do you use electric or manual? I'm going to get electric. They scare you a bit. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're a bit... Yeah, they're, yeah. A bit, they're, a bit, they're a bit alive. I've got £20 on commission, looking for two now. 22 I've got five. Do you want eight? Come on. I've got 30. Do you want five? 35. It's going up. Are out. It needs to be a lot more than that, and he's out there. At 35 on the net, at 35, oh, do we want hurt. 40 now? It hurts. Yeah. You're wounded. At 35, it's, do we want 40 it's now? It's worth a lot more than that. It is. Out. Anyway. And we'll sell to the net at 35, then. That is, oh, that is highly a... disappointing. <laughs> yes, it does leave a bit of a cavity in your profits. Can I say anything to make you feel better? No. You've got nice teeth. Thank you. You've got lovely teeth. I still teeth. feel upset. <laughs> Margie's big wooden sign now. Is it a shoe in or a load of old cobblers? It's thirty pounds. I've got straight in on the net. Oh, thirty. No, do we want you. five I told now? I should have paid thirty for it. Thirty-five now in the room. Do you want forty? Thirty-five, forty, and five. Forty-five. Looking for fifty now. Oh, sign up. He wants it. He wants it. <gasps> at forty-five, it is then. Internet, you're out. That's what it's worth. Out of the room at forty-five pounds then. Hardly worth the shoe leather, was it? Huh? But that's what it was worth. Yeah. I knew it was. Yeah. So why did you bite a silly girl? And finally, Truco's biggest splurge. He had to trade in another item to afford this. 320 on the net, 350 anywhere. At 320 on the net, at 320, 330, do we want 340? It's got, got to be at more. 330 on the net, at 330, looking for 340 now. Come on. <laughs> I mean, it's interesting <laughs> bits there. Great mix Tell of silver here. Sell at it to me. Do we want <laughs> I'm not buying it. Mikey, can you not pick it? And we'll sell to the net bidder at 3.30. Hammers down. A little bit. You've only lost a little bit. A little bit more than a little bit, I'd say, but bad luck, old bean. And that's it. Been fun, hasn't it? Yes, yeah, how sad it's over. I'm very sad. I know. Oh, you'll have me in tears in a minute, and I haven't told you the final scores yet. Stand by. Margie began this leg with £539, and after sale room fees, made a little bit of a loss. She ends the trip with a very respectable £519.86. Good on you, Margie. But it's Chuko who's king of the castle. He started today with £1,004, and despite her whopping loss after auction costs, he still managed to bring home an impressive £783.10. And all those super profits go to children in need. Wow. Wow. Good Congratulations, job. Margie. You won Thank that you. one. Thank you. I did, but you've won the week. I've won the week. Oh, well deserved. Oh, look at that. I'm going to leave on a compliment to me. Yeah, we've had a lovely time. Oh, I've had a time. brilliant, brilliant time. Don't forget me. I won't forget okay. you, darling. <laughs> You've given us big profits and lots and lots of laughs. We couldn't ask for more. Next on the trip... Oh, it's a bit squeaky, that steering wheel. <laughs> oh, is it you? <laughs> Old hands David Harper... Smile. ..and Catherine Southern... Oops. ..back together after ten years. <laughs> Does she know what she's talking about? and as competitive as ever. Get in there! <laughs>